Is it really good to buy a game at full price anymore? So I've been gaming for a very long time, especially during the Xbox, PS2, and GameCube days. Fast forward among the days where we have season passes, microtransactions, expansion passes, blah, blah, blah. Is it easy just to go into digital gaming such as Xbox Game Pass or EA Play? Let's talk about it. Subscription-based gaming, for me, has been a very reliable thing. I have been an Xbox Game Pass member for quite a few years, I believe, and it means a lot to me because I can just try whatever game that's on that catalog and see what's for me personally, as opposed to just dropping X amount of dollars, especially for a full price game that I might not like. It's a pretty big risk for me compared to just doing subscription-based gaming. For example, Let's talk about Starfield. I have a very spicy take on Starfield personally, and here we go. Starfield's boring. <laughs> like, I'm not, I am not fond of it really. I don't know what it is that Bethesda has to their games, but there's like this charm that always hooks you and you're like, I gotta keep playing more. And that's Starfield. It was one of those games for me where I just wanted to keep on playing more. But in the world where we've had way bigger, bigger games, such as Baldur's Gate 3, for example, it's a gift that keeps on giving compared to something like Starfield. It's a completely different game, obviously, and I hate comparing games to games, but those expectations are gonna be high. When you play a game of such high quality like that, your expectations are gonna be a lot higher when you play a game that's gonna be very different. So imagine playing something of that quality like Baldur's Gate 3 and then playing Starfield. It's a completely night and day experience in so many different ways. I would never pay $70 for Starfield. Absolutely not. And this is where subscription based gaming comes into play because if I don't want to spend that X amount of money on said game, but I still wouldn't mind giving it a try, that's where that would come into play. Did you know Microsoft wasn't the first to try on-demand subscription-based gaming? Back in 1980, a toy company called Mattel created Playcable for its Intellivision console. This allowed subscribers to download games through television cables. This was an early experiment that was unfortunately discontinued due to the video game crash of 1983. Microsoft launched Game Pass on June 1st, 2017, only having a small catalog of games. It eventually reached success with its ever-expanding catalog and making it a part of the Xbox Live Gold plan. Xbox Game Pass has amassed over 30 million subscribers as of April 2022. Other companies such as EA and Ubisoft also dipped their toes into the subscription-based model, with EA eventually making its service bundled along with Xbox Game Pass. Subscription-based gaming is very reliable for me personally. Another way how it saved me money was playing Payday 3. Payday 3 was a cool game, but you know how that went down. So you have to ask yourself, what is it that you want from subscription-based gaming versus retail? Usually I buy retail if it's a game that I am extremely excited for and I want to support developers and give them my money to help them produce bigger things for future projects. For example, I found a hidden gem called Midnight Fight Express and I absolutely loved this game. I actually bought it on Steam, so I got it for my Steam Deck because it was that fun and I would have never discovered said game if it wasn't for Game Pass. I could not stop playing this game. The, the soundtrack, the gameplay, the combat, it really scratched so many itches for me, and it was such a great beat em up, and that's something that I would have never discovered if it was not for Xbox Game Pass. I feel like being exposed to so many different games for a fixed price or for a monthly price or yearly price, that gives you more compared to just dropping X amount of dollars for one specific game. But that's just me. It comes down to your amount of research. What do you want to get out of this description versus dropping X amount of dollars on a specific game? We're in an age where we're not really guaranteed what we paid for anymore. Games are coming out at a very low quality and it's everything's just getting eventually fixed by hot fixes and patches and that's just something that that's something that just always bothers me 
For example, Cyberpunk 2077 was not the best release, as we all may know. And then when Fair and Liberty came out, everyone's praising it to be like this huge thing. And I'm always there. I'm always down for a comeback story. It's good to see that that game got back on its feet and is doing a lot for, for its community. But that release still happened. And I can't just forget that with a very good expansion. The whole comeback method, which is something that's been done so many times where they re you release a game at its most questionable state and then it eventually gets fixed after X amount of years or months. And you're like, okay, well, I already played this game already. I already did this. It's like, it's kind of hard to come back from that. And it's, I feel like it's almost becoming a method now where, you know, you release said game at a horrible state and then you eventually fix it to where it was supposed to be originally and everyone's kind of clapping you saying wow you saved the game where it was like where was this game when it first released where was this and it's just that's just something that just always bothers me man i just can't really get over that <laughs> So all in all, you have to ask yourself, what kind of games do you play? How often do you play games? And is this something that could really save you money? Which is something you have to do on your own research. For me personally, subscription-based gaming is a very special place in my heart. It's easier for me to get around, to try different games, to see if said game is for me. I've been saved so many times by Xbox Game Pass or whatever else subscription-based platform to the point where it's like, I feel like this might be my only way to try out new games, where if it's not in Game Pass, I'm just gonna wait. So either it goes on sale or if it does come to Game Pass. So what do you prefer? Subscription-based gaming or retail? Are you someone who prefers the fluidity that comes with the digital age of gaming, even though it does have its own issues? Or retail gaming, having the physical disc in hand where it is yours forever? Let me know in the comments, what do you prefer? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.